In the software development, there are so many scenarios where you have to create some POCs or test applications before actually making the changes in your production or the actual application. In those test applications or POCs, you have to set up everything on your system. And if you have to create any POC for your backend code, then you must install the database on your system or you have to access that database from a particular server. But because this is just a testing or the POC, so there is no proper benefit of using the actual database over there. In these scenarios where you are working as a backend developer and you want to create some POCs or test applications for your scenario, then you can use the database without even installing it. In this video, I'm going to talk about how can we do that. So first here, I will create a new application by using this Visual Studio. And here I am using this ASP.NET Core Web API. This concept is applicable in all the .NET frameworks. So here I'm using this .NET Core Web API. Click on the next and this is going to be a very simple application. So I will leave everything default. This is the .NET 8.0. Remember, whatever library I will use over here, that library is available in the previous versions of .NET also. Let's click on this create button. Now we are having the default ASP.NET Core Web API application. And now let's assume that I want to perform some operations on the employee class. So here I have to create a scenario where I will set up everything about the employee. So let's create a new folder over here. This is add and let's create a new folder with name data. Although this structure does not matter, you can put them in the root folder as well, or you can use them based on your scenarios. So here I will be using a new class and this is going to be employee. This is the employee class and it will have only very few properties. So first one is going to be this ID and second one is going to be name. Now let's create one DB context class over here. And for that, let's give a meaningful name app DB context. As of now, leave it as a blank one. Now we have to add a package over here. So for that, we have to go to the NuGet. Let's right click over here, manage NuGet packages and click on this browse tab. And here you have to search for entity framework core in memory. Remember this entity framework core act as a bridge in between your application and the database. And you can use this entity framework core with almost all the databases. You can use it with the MySQL, SQL Server, Cosmos DB, MongoDB and all other major databases that are available. So here I will be using the in-memory database. And if you will compare this in-memory database with your actual database, then of course there will be some differences over there because this is not a real database. This is just the in-memory database and there will be some limitations as well in this in-memory database. For example, you cannot use some transactions over here. On the other hand, if you want to run the row SQL query, then that is also not possible in this in-memory. But this is a very good way to create your POCs and test applications if you are using them for some general scenarios. So here we are having this package microsoft.entityframecore.inmemory. Let's click on this install button and let's install it in the application. And remember this in-memory database is also using this microsoft.entityframecore.8.0. It means all the feature of Entity Framework Core is available in this in-memory package, right? Let's click on this apply button, accept. And the package has been installed successfully in this application. Now let's go to this app db context class and over here let's inherit it from the db context. So we are using this db context and let's just use the namespace. Here I'm using this entity framework core and here I have to pass the options. So db context options, this one and this is the generic one. So I have to pass this name and let's use the options and here in the bracket, let's pass the options. And if you are wondering what I'm doing over here with this parenthesis, so this is a new concept that has been added in C Sharp 12, which is the .NET 8. And this is called as primary constructor. Now we have to add our DB set over here. So for that, what I can do here, I can write this DB set. And in this DB set, I can write the name of my table. Basically, this is going to be employee. Let's copy it, put it here. And let's just give a meaningful name. You can have a different name over here. For example, you want to have employees, then that will also work. Now we are done with the changes in this app DB context class. And if you will notice that this is exactly similar what we do in case of SQL server also. Now let's go back to the program.cs class and we have to register this entity framework core as a dependency. How can we do that? So we have to use this builder dot services dot add db context. 
and what is the name of our db context class this is app db context now here i have to provide some options and the options are that this time i will be using the in memory database so this is options dot use in memory database and over here you have to provide the name of your database if you are dealing with the sql server then you will install that related package and over here you have to use use sql server but here we are using this in memory so i'm using this use in memory database and in case of that sql server you have to write a proper connection string over here but because here we are using the in memory so we have to only use the name of the database and either you can use the name as hard code over here or you can also get that from your app settings so for example here i want to write my database name and let's use this connection string and here give a meaningful key so let's say my test db and you can give any meaningful name to your database so let's say it is again this my test db now by using this key i can fetch the value that i have written in this app settings let's go back to this program.cs class and over here let's use this builder dot configuration dot get connection string over here you have to provide your key that's it this is the only change that is required to work with the in memory database and if you want to convert this application to the actual one then you have to just update the package and use the proper method over here and basically you have to update the connection string in this app setting file perfect now let's create a controller and let's test all the settings over here so we don't need this weather forecast let's just delete it i will delete this class also and let's delete this dot http file too okay now let's go to this controller click on this add and this is the controller here i will be using this api and this time let's use this method of the scaffolding although you can use your own custom method but here just to save some time i will be using this one let's click on this add button and here we have to select some default classes so first i have to choose my model so for example this is going to be employee and i have to choose my db context class so this is my db context class and let's give a meaningful name so which is employee controller let's click on this add button so this will take a couple of seconds and this will install this package tools and some packages for this scaffolding and then it will generate the entire controller automatically and there we go we are having this controller over here now let's just run this application and see how it works so you can run this application by clicking on this button and you can also make some more changes over here for example if you want to use the primary constructor in this controller then you can do that as well and how is that possible so basically use the parenthesis along with the name of this controller and let's use this underscore because this is the name that we are using in all our methods and now we can remove this particular code like this that's it now we are using the primary constructor although using the primary constructor will not make any difference over here this is just for the readability now let's just run this application the application is running and here we are having this swagger now let's try the first api so this is the api to get all the records click on this try it out and click on this execute button and here you will notice that we are having the empty list this is because this in memory database does not have any record as of now so first let's add a few records over there and for that we can use this second api which is this post click on this try now and let's use some data for example here i'm using this one and let's use some dummy data so this is one one click on this execute and here you will notice that we are getting this particular response okay now let's add one more over here one one and click on this execute this time you will notice that we are getting the error because we are passing id one so let's update this two over here click on this execute button and you will notice that we are getting this data over here now let's try the first api which is to get all the records click on this execute button and you will notice that we are having two records this scenario will work fine only with the pocs and only for the test applications if you want to use this for your production application then this scenario will not work why because if you will just stop your visual studio like this and just run this application again then the entire data will be lost you will have to add your data again because this database is created only in the in memory and that in memory is provided when your application is running so now if you will try to just execute the same api then you will notice that you will not have any data like this and if you will ask 
can I see the tables of that particular in memory database? So in reality, there is no specific tool like that, but you can use some default techniques. For example, you can use the logging in ASP.NET Core Web API or you can also use the debugging feature. You can put your debugger near the DB context and you can use that to just view the query. That is all in this video. I hope the video was helpful. I will really appreciate if you will subscribe to the channel and share the video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.